in my paper, um, I actually, I don't know who, uh, who in the audience uh, been here yesterday, but we had very interesting uh, discussion about uh, cosmism and whether cosmism is a, a kind of movement, a coherent philosophical movement or rather historical construction. And uh, so I think um, in, in my paper I would kind of, I would refer to that discussion because what I'm going to do, I'm actually will try to uh, to rethink uh, philosophical conceptualization of, of the Soviet avant-garde and particularly constructivism and productivism and related um, artistic movements, which normally, um, if you look at the discourse in the art history and art uh, theory, normally these movements uh, represented in a kind of two uh, two ways. Uh, normally, some researchers uh, think uh, that such notions as construction, tectonics, production, and life building, uh, they refer uh, to, um, to a, a theory of social constructivism. And yesterday we also heard a lot of uh, uh, there was a lot of references to the new Soviet man, uh, to a kind of Nietzschean vitalism. Uh, so all these notions, um, some, some assume that they refer to this kind of forceful totalitarian um, idea of a building uh, a, a forcefully a new social order and social relations. And then in the art history, of course, you have this kind of controversy. How do we treat Lisitsky, Rochenko, and others? If you look at early works, or it's purely aesthetical matter. In, um, they talk about aesthetics, and construction is purely aesthetical notion, uh, beautiful, uh, closely linked uh, to Western modernist uh, conceptions of art. But then what happens, um, Lisitsky and others, they participate in Stalinist projects. They um, traveling, uh, photographing uh, gulags and other very interesting sites of um, Stalinist life building. And so what do we do, what do we do with that, um, with, with that controversy? And theoretical explanation normally uh, goes as following, that there is a good, very nice, early uh, um, sort of constructivist, uh, constructivist approach to art. And then later, the more brutal, vulgar, uh, theory of uh, production art, productivism, appears, replaces this aesthetical, nice conception of art. Um, um, uh, so the notion of production, productivism, anticipates uh, Stalinist uh, project of uh, camps, it celebrates labor, and um, uh, then it celebrates utilitarian approach to art, and um, this way, uh, we, we can see that this kind of vitalist notion of new life building and new Soviet men replaces uh, this kind of old constructivist approach to art. Of course, it's very schematical. I'm, I'm giving a very schematical caricature of, of these discussions, but if you read uh, many uh, works and uh, recently the interest to productivism actually appears only recently in works of Christina Kjaer and Maria Goof. So the proper study uh, of, of uh, productivism appears in mid 2000s. So before, before you would have this sort of very brief, especially in English speaking context, uh, the, the, it's different story in German and Italian context, but it's 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 uh, this kind of conceptual or ideological even post 91 configuration which treats uh, which treats uh, avant-garde under uh, this framework 
So instead, um, instead of continuing sort of or developing uh, this framework, I propose to shift, uh, to shift uh, the focus and to actually look uh, at different uh, uh, genealogical, so I, I propose to, um, to develop a different genealogy of uh, both constructivism and productivism and to bridge uh, this, uh, these movements and these theories with philosophy of um, Alexander Bogdanov, who is a kind of shadow figure which uh, rarely considered as an important reference, uh, conceptual and philosophical reference, which could actually reframe uh, the concept which I uh, discussed before, such as um, construction, tectonics, production, and life building. And um, so I propose to look more closely uh, to his philosophy and, and, and to, uh, and to uh, try to re re rethink uh, this conceptual uh, series in, in, in respect to this philosophy. So therefore my paper splits in roughly three parts. Uh, at first I will talk about philosophy of Alexander Bogdanov and, and then I will try to show very briefly how his main philosophical assumptions contributed uh, to development of constructivist and productivist theories, and then after that I will briefly talk about um, uh, Andrei Platonov. Uh, we've heard about him in previous papers. Very good, I do not have to introduce, um, introduce him. Uh, but uh, and, and, but I, I have to say uh, before, before, I, uh, before I move to the core of my paper, still briefly uh, about Bogdanov, so uh, it is very well known that he was an opponent of Lenin and he was a follower and founder of very, very peculiar philosophical, uh, philosophical line in Soviet Marxism, which I uh, prefer to call imperial Marxism. So uh, he combined um, imperial criticism and Marxism uh, and um, he also was a founder of prolet cult uh, movement uh, um, which had art studios, educational programs, and scientific clubs. And in fact, this tradition uh, was very uh, popular and had a very, uh, it had a great intellectual authority in art community. So a writer, Andrei Platonov, who was uh, a prolet cult activist uh, and also an engineer um, and uh, uh, writer and a philosopher and essayist. Um, uh, he wrote a very famous novel such as Chevengur, uh, which, uh, which discusses the first years of post-revolutionary years and also the Foundation Pit, the very famous uh, critique of transition to, to Stalinist, uh, Stalinist economical and political program of collectivization. Um, so um, he, he was linked directly to uh, Bogdanov uh, and he refers uh, to his philosophy uh, in his novels. Uh, but also we, uh, we know that such theorists of productivism and constructivism as Boris Arvatov, Nikolai Tarabukin and Alexei Gan also were members of prolet cult. Uh, Arvatov worked for prolet cult. All of them were engaged in, in prolet cult movement. And for instance, Eisenstein, Tretikov, Rochenk collaborated with prolet cult studios. And this is very obvious empirical context, which provides uh, uh, factual foundations for comparisons of all, of all all these artistic movements with Bogdanov's philosophy, but in fact, nobody, or there, there, there are few uh, works which acknowledge uh, this, this background, and partially because both Bogdanov and Prolet Kult um, uh, were seen as a vulgar, brutal um, sort of followers of vulgar conception of proletarian culture, 
And the idea was to separate it from complicated aesthetic theories of avant-garde. And that's why I think many art historians consciously decide not to actually go there and not to discuss, uh, not to discuss uh, Bogdanov. So in his main philosophical work, uh, which is not uh, translated into English, but uh, the title is Imperial Manism Articles on Philosophy, and it was written in 1905 three volumes. Um, Bogdanov tries to, uh, so he begins with basic resolution of subject-object dualism, which was at stake in, uh, um, in, in that milieu. So he begins uh, with a basic imperialist assumption that the experience of the outer world is given as the conjuncture of objects' attributes. So we perceive not actually an object, but its attributes. And if we decompose these attributes, it gives us uh, elementary sensations of space, time, color, form, and size. And, um, but the same elements of experience the same um, attributes, they are sensations only uh, on, on, on our psychical side of reality. But the same elements, uh, the same elements may uh, belong to the physical bodies as their uh, attributes. So what appears for us as uh, in perception, at the same time, on the side of the object, uh, appears at, as attributes of, of, of the subjects. So in other words, there is no uh, even such uh, distinction as subject and object would be incorrect for Bogdanov. Instead, we have to talk about uh, the logic of connectivity, which uh, produces the different types of uh, relationships. And uh, uh, as I said, that. Uh, at at, uh, at one side, it would be a series of relationships which gives uh, sensations. On the other side, uh, we can talk about uh, attributes and then exchange between the sensations and attributes produces uh, proper forms and objects. So that's how, uh, that's how Bogdanov resolves uh, the, the subject-object uh, sort of split. Uh, proposing uh, the idea of co connectivity within, within the environment. So environmental conception replaces, uh, replaces the, 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 the sort of traditional uh, uh, philosophical idea of uh, matter, substance, and subject. So then environment is a mediator of this ongoing process of composition of the psychophysical series. So um, this series, sensations, attributes of uh, such as form, size, and color, uh, they uh, make life complexes, according to Bogdanov. And otherwise, uh, what appears as a life complexes in social reality uh, can be also seen uh, as a self-organizing flow of the uh, physical and psychical concatenations of, the, of these life complexes. And I quote uh, from Bogdanov's philosophy of experience. The universe presents itself to us as an endless flow of organizing activity. The either of electrical and light waves was probably that primeval a uh, universal environment from which matter visit forces and later on also life crystallized. So um, the universe is this flowing concatenation of, of, of uh, a series which produce uh, life complexes and life on Earth. And here we can talk about uh, this cosmic cosmic elements of Bogdanov's philosophy. So the cosmic elements here is only uh, the synthetic uh, um, appeal to uh, philosophy and science where materialism is no longer 
again appears as an abstract discussion of subject and object, but Bogdanov tries to um, uh, tries to bring uh, scientific, uh, particularly uh, phys physical uh, theories of universe and matter. Also, he uses mathematics and med medicine to actually uh, to actually propose uh, a sort of uh, different uh, a different understanding what uh, materialism could be. And in this sense, he talks about, not about substance, but he talks about universe, he talks about cosmical particles, which makes the series and life complexes. Uh, and uh, only in that respect, uh, we can, I guess, I guess somehow bridge, uh, bridge Bogdanov uh, to the cosmicist, uh, cosmicist um, theories. Um, so the, 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 the matter is how this universe proceeds uh, from, from this spontaneous flow of, of, clashing, um, of clashing series to the coherent organized uh, forms of life. And this is the, 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 and what is the agency of the social order in this organizing, uh, organizing activity since Bogdanov dismantles the very idea of subject, uh, uh, the subject is replaced here uh, by the idea of, of, uh, social, uh, of social order, which is for him a highest, uh, highest level of uh, organization as opposed to more spontaneous um, elemental uh, organization which characterizes uh, natural natural order. And this kind of uh, rationalist principle of uh, that the social order is more rational, is capable of organizing um, uh, rational objects, uh, such as even industries, infrastructures, construction sites. Uh, and um, uh, and in, in this way, uh, the active agency of of, of, of the social consist in uh, rational organization of, 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 this, uh, of this level, um, which is also uh, appears as a communist organization, uh, organization which will, uh, which will be based on, uh, on communist principles of equality. Uh, and um, th this is how uh, actually, um, the fusion of empiricist, purely empiricist uh, resolution of, of fundamental philosophical problems um, uh, meets, uh, meets with, uh, with a sort of um, Marxist, uh, in, in very abstract sense, Marxist background and um, Bogdanov. But what also distinguishes uh, him uh, from classical empiricism uh, position is of course that in this system perception, subject, uh, object is not pre-given, uh, is not pre-given entity or position, but historically formed quality, quality of of the subject, so that the ideas of size, space, time, and color they are not pre-given, but they formed uh, historically. Uh, through the uh, practical steps of organizing them into these life complexes and orders. So those a color becomes an element of experience only after the operation of separation and the abstraction of the property of color from an object. And uh, this is uh, the favorite example of Bogdanov is uh, that if you want to make a brick, a red brick, we first uh, need to have the idea of this brick and the idea of the redness of the red. And, and this idea of red comes when we extract particular elements, mix them together, and then some kind of color appears and we name it red. And only after that we have the, the idea of red and we perceive red, red objects. Otherwise, uh, we don't know what is, uh, what is red. Uh, so it's purely historically constructed um, idea. And uh, laboring, uh, laboring uh, human is in fact organizing, first of all, perception, uh, then actions uh, and, uh, 
anything else uh, and constructs uh, social order. So it's, uh, in, in this sense, it's also very constructivist organizational ontology. Um, and there is another quote uh, from Bogdanov. The practice of this great social organism is nothing other than world building. The world which has been constructed and continues to be under construction is the most grandiose and perfect that we know. Such is our picture of the world, an unbroken series of forms of organization of elements, of forms that develop and struggle and interaction without any beginning in the past, without any end in the future. That is why art, according to Bogdanov, corresponds to the same organizational ontology. And I give you another quote uh, from his most famous book, Tictology, which is translated both to German and English. Um, so Bogdanov writes, artistic creativity combined and often alloyed with cognition, as may be seen in many pieces of belle lettres, poetry and painting, organizes understanding, feelings and emotions by its own methods. In art, the organization of ideas and the organization of things are inseparable. For instance, an architectural construction, a statue a pa or a painting as they are, might be regarded as systems of dead elements of stone, metal, canvases and paint. But the lively meanings of pieces of art belong to the complexes of images and emotions to which they give life in a human psyche. So it is not hard, uh, I think, to see that uh, Bogdanov's world uh, building is close to productivist figures of life builder and engineer uh, constru uh, con um, constructor, engineer constructor in, in Russian. Art is a labor of shaping and composing and objects according to the usefulness of a color and the form, writes uh, Osip Brick. Uh, in the Manifesto Constructivism, Alexei Gan um, provides a very long, uh, three pages long quotation from Bogdanov to support an argument uh, uh, about importance of organization and production. So Gan claims that material production replaces representational art. This new mode of production saves only purposeful activity of artistic labor and formal foundations of art, such as line, flatness, volume, and action. And it, it's actually a uh, constructivist uh, um, theory of Gunn is very close to Bogdanov's uh, critical um, historicist approach uh, to the formation of perception and participation of labor in formation of perception and then in, in formation of art objects. So similar to the production of bricks or to production of, I don't know, other more complex uh, objects uh, in factory production, in art, um, uh, the, the same procedure of extracting uh, from outside uh, the kind of attributes of particular objects and then deconstructing them and uh, so, so that line, flatness, volume and other, other attributes uh, became uh, foundational for Gunn. Uh, constructivism is organizational science. Uh, 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 we can read it uh, in, in, in the Gunn's uh, constructivist book, which seeks a form, and I quote Gunn, of organization and cementation of the mass labor processes in the wall of social production. Uh, it may lead us to conclusion that even the famous disciplines of constructivism, which also um, uh, Gunn uh, discusses in, in, in his book, because uh, they appear there. Uh, these three disciplines, uh, construction, factor, factura, and tectonics, um, fully corresponds to the principles of organization. So factura appears as a process of extraction and manufacturing of the elements of nature, so such as the, the brick and the redness of the brick and uh, things like that. Um, while uh, construction is the aggregation of the complexes of elements into a purposeful organizational plan, 
and this purposeful organizational plan, according to GAN, is uh, tectonics. So the organizational point of view appears uh, to Nikolai Chuzak, uh, who also briefly was discussed in previous presentation, as a grandiose cosmogony of all-embracing uh, life building. And I quote Chuzak, people who look at art from the point of view of communist monism inevitably come to the conclusion that art is only a quantitatively individual, temporary and predominantly emotional method of life building, and as such cannot remain isolated or what is more self-sustaining compared with other approaches uh, to life building. Tarabukin in The Artist in a Club, uh, a book uh, from 1926, understand the organization of emotions also in empiricist terms or in, in Bogdanovian terms, as the orientation of a subject in the natural and social environment. Artist uh, does not copy um, uh, the reality, but organizes uh, nature at the canvas, building a landscape according to compositional laws. So the artist is the same organizing particle of the universe. Um, and um, the, uh, according to Tarabukin and Chuzak, artist is organizing emotional uh, uh, and also perceptive uh, mode of perception. And the task of the artist after the revolution is, of course, to rearrange perception in a communist way uh, as such that um, the artist, and I quote Tarabukin, would be uh, the organizer or of our visual orientation. In early prolet cultist article, Proletarian Poetry, from 1922, Andrei Platonov states uh, that proletarian art uh, has to begin uh, with the organization of immaterial things. So the organization of immaterial things, which is for him also a perception Pre, pre, uh, mainly a perception, but also images and symbols of things, the words, so is the main task of the artist. And he distinguishes three elements of a world, idea, image, and sound. And uh, the organization of poetry according to these tri uh, tri uh, triangular properties um, of a word is, according to him, a process of gathering of all wandering feelings and senses into one sort. And this is precisely what he understands by communist uh, sensibility, uh, by communist perception, is that all wandering, uh, uh, unorganized, spontaneous feelings of the proletariat who had no agency in, in the world history before, they has uh, they, they has to be organized, uh, brought together, not represented, but brought, brought together and rearranged uh, into a, a form of thinking. And proletarian culture for him is precisely this process of making conscious this wandering thoughts of making uh, proletarian uh, proletariat uh, conscious of, of uh, its own uh, feelings. Uh, and uh, actually, similar task uh, appears in Vertov's uh, project of Kina Eye and Radio Ear, uh, which is organization of uh, hearing, uh, organization of sound and perception, perception in, in broader sense into the uh, into the co communist uh, way that for him cinema uh, which uh, which rearranges uh, the, these properties of sound and image uh, which produces a particular forms of montage aims to to show the totality of 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 the world and to show a position of proletariat within this totality and there uh, and 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 uh, this is also I think uh, very bridges uh, uh, bridges Platonov and Vertov. If we look uh, both uh, from this perspective of uh, Bogdanov's uh, philosophy, so the art uh, begins with organization of senses and proceeds to the organization of matter. And here Platonov goes further. Because for him, the task of the artist, uh, of course, uh, he had no illusion that artists can immediately uh, reorganize uh, 
reorganize production or like uh, productivist colleagues, uh, which which thought that artists has to begin with reorganization of entire social infrastructures. So for Platonov, uh, the task of reorganizing perception and sensibility to collectivize this sensibility, to show this totality, to show proletarian uh, proletariat as it is, uh, was uh, also quite a gr grandiose task. But from this task, only rearranging uh, this level, according to him, we can proceed uh, to the organization of matter. And what is this organization of matter? And here uh, uh, we uh, can um, try uh, to read it again in close uh, proximity to Bogdanov's theory. In his uh, science fiction story, The Impossible from 1921, Platonov writes, the Swedish physicist Archenius has a beautiful, amazing hypothesis concerning the origin of life on the Earth. It is his guess that life is neither a local nor a terrestrial phenomenon. It has been transported to us from other planets through enormous ethereal spaces in the form of the smallest and most elementary colonies of organisms. From here, one can draw the following general conclusion. There are no uh, conditions in the universe to which life couldn't adapt. If conditions are disastrous or catastrophic, life could be simplified to an incredibly small size in order to increase its stability and endurance. And this is what saves it. Perhaps atoms and atoms of atoms, electrons, are the same microorganism, but only in its li limitary initial form. So similar reflections about atoms and electrons are repeated uh, by scientist Popov in the science fiction story Ethereal uh, Tract from uh, 27. His theory includes uh, understanding of living and dead matter. The matter is dead, according to the scientist Popov, but inside of, uh, uh, of, of this dead matter, there, there is a living entity. Uh, at the center of the atoms. So they filled by uh, dead matter, consist of dead electrons, and uh, the living one eats these dead electrons to grow. And then the scientist has the crazy idea how to increase production of iron or production of other, uh, other materials if we just force if we speed up this process of uh, feeding uh, the dead electrons or the, the living electrons by the dead, dead ones. But then it ends up by um, a catastrophe because uh, then ecological catastrophe comes when, when there is a huge increase of this iron production. So it's very interesting <laughs> science fiction story. Uh, but uh, this living entity or elemental unit uh, is the self-organizing matter. Uh, and according to P Platonov's vocabulary, uh, the living entity is also appears as a substance of existence or uh, as a vishistvo of existence. And this Russian word vishistvo is very uh, strange and peculiar because it means uh, many things at once. It means matter, it means substance, a thing, materiality, and stuff at the same time. So in English translation, uh, vishistvo uh, appears as substance, essence, a thing, and an object. But this translation is context uh, contextual, and what is also interesting that the root of the known vishistvo is vish, and Vesh is a very important topic in avant-gardist discussions about uh, objects. So Vesh is also op an object, uh, a thing. And uh, moreover, essence, uh, suchness, is also a cognate of existence, существование. So all these words, they connect it uh, semantically. They have the same, uh, the same root in, in Russian language. And in old Russian, uh, the parallel usage of vishistvo, vish, meta, and body um, were quite common, and sometimes even synonymous. Uh, and uh, vishistvo uh, meant the substratum of, of the world in this uh, medieval context. 
So then, uh, the, if we go back to Bogdanov and his his theory of elements of experience, and if we link it to Vishistvo, um and we, we can also say Vishistvo is German Stoff and Stofflichkeit. Uh, which is materiality, materiality of, of the world. So this is precisely the very, uh, very strange uh, materialist, um, vitalist, uh, in some respect, um, philosophical uh, foundation of Plat Platonov's uh, philosophy and, and, and his novels. And there is a scene in the Foundation Pit uh, where the main character, uh, Voshev, his name is Voshev, he collects... Um, uh, and I quote, the objects of unhappiness and obscurity. Objects is vishy, so he collects vishistvo, uh, um, uh, um, which is a, a kind of garbage, uh, leaves, uh, rubbish, and um, it appears as a memory, as a memory of proper thing, which, were, which exhausted and became this vishistvo, this kind of substratum of... of of, of a thing, uh, and it appears also as a reminder of its exhaustion in the past. And it seems that this strange practice of collecting the leaves, garbage, and objects, destroyed objects of material uh, culture, uh, also manifests this kind of constructivist, uh, more negativist one uh, practice of reorganizing matter, or maybe in, um, in Fedorov's um, Terminology, it would be uh, the practice of collecting the dead molecular pieces uh, in order to resurrect them uh, in, in the future, but not in, in the religious sense, but in a sense of uh, uh, exactly in a kind of anti-humanist sense, because the practice of collecting things, uh, not uh, it, it's res re resurrection of the culture of the past, it's resurrection of the destroyed and damaged um, uh, proletarian culture as well, which Platonov tries to bring uh, the, these pieces together and to show uh, it um, in a way that it appears as a totality of, of experience. Um, so, um, Vishistvo uh, is crucial for understanding also thinking in together, uh, thinking and bodily experience and materiality of the world. Uh, as a uh, concrete and object-oriented uh, activity related uh, to labor experience. So in this way, we can also reinterpret avant-gardist appeal to the production of things. And maybe you're familiar with Lisitsky journal uh, Vesh, uh, which, which would be interesting, but maybe provocative task for the future to reflect on the production of communist objects and, and discussions on objectivity and alienation in uh, many theories of uh, Soviet avant-garde in, in relation to this kind of organizational ontology of Bogdanov and uh, also of Platonov. So uh, in the foundation pit, the working class is defined as, as those, and I quote, who silently made useful substance useful vishistvo, and in Chevingur novel as those who has been multiplied from the laboring proletariat vishistvo, from the laboring proletarian uh, um, objects, I guess. In so um, uh, the, the, the reorganization of senses and the reorganizations of things becomes uh, then uh, the main agenda for uh, Soviet avant-garde and Andrei Platonov. Thank you. <laughs>